Some of my brothers, how you doing, guys? How you going? Doing? What's going on, brother? Hey, 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 hey. Episode, episode two, episode two. Episode two. I can't believe we're here. It was good. Thank you, everyone, for chopping it up with us last week. It was so great to have everyone in. We got a lot of good feedback, a lot of comments, a lot of critiques. We, we appreciate all the good, the bad, and the ugly. We just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for joining, uh, joining us again on our journey to give you people informative talk and entertainment. So, guys, with that said, there's a lot of things going on this past week. So, the past week, we got a couple of hot topics. One of the hot topics this week was our girl. Well, I mean, she blocked me on Instagram, like I told you before. Our girl, uh, Cardi B. Yeah. So, Cardi B and uh, her husband, Offset, broke up. And they apparently got back together. And so, my thing was thinking, like, a lot of women, a lot of people jump in to people when they break up and, like, pick sides real quick. But then that's could cause a friction sometimes because those people wind up getting back together like a week later. So like anyone could jump in. How you guys feel about that? Have you seen that? Have you been part of that kind of mix before? Anything like that? Oh man, how many times does that happen, man? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. your, your, your boy comes over, man. You know, and and, and, and this is why I don't give advice, brother. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is why. Yeah, yeah. You know how many times I'm with my man or whatever? He's like, oh my lady, da da da, it's going off, going off. Imagine you start jumping in it with him, you know, yeah, you give him advice, you're supposed to do this, do this, do this, right. and he's like, yeah, you're amping him up, and next thing you know, man, you know, <laughs> he's that. But now, now, who does that happen more to, guys or, guys, or guys or women? I don't know, man, you know, it doesn't happen, I, it doesn't happen, it shouldn't happen, you know, this me being my show in itself, it shouldn't happen so much with guys, but, you know, but um, but maybe it happened, I don't know, man, but I've, I've seen it, I've seen it happen a couple times with myself, man, you know, a couple you know, there's one dude, you know, he's a good friend of mine, but I had to, you know, I don't hear nothing about him and his wife no more, man. You know what I'm saying? He starts talking about it. I'm like, yo, that's my sister. I don't even want to, I don't even want to hear about it no more. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't even entertain the conversation. You know? Ronnie, how about you, Rod? How about you, Rod? I, I'll be honest with you. Yeah, it's a com it's a common thing, but um, I think that men and women give different advice in that situation. Mm -hmm. You know, me personally, I don't, I don't, I don't ever tell anybody to break up because if, that's a decision that you got to make on your own. Yeah. You know what I mean? The thing is, when you're ready to break up, trust me, you're going to know. You know what I mean? And plus, when you when the argument is fresh, I mean, people are saying a lot of things that they, they don't mean. They're angry. They're upset. You know what I'm saying? Their feelings are hurt. You know what I mean? So for a friend, if you consider them a friend, to tell you to break up with somebody, uh, I, I'm, I'm not kind of with that because that's how you get caught out there because – when they patch things up or they oh, start yeah. missing each other, mm -hmm. guess what? Yo, Ralph told me to break up with you. That's the mm -hmm. that's definitely coming out. You it's, know gonna be, find... it's gonna be pillow talk. It's gonna happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I find this, I find this actually you, you your man can't even, you know, be around you. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, you know, like depending on how badly they went in, you know, it's like, you know, yeah. you kind of ashamed to even be around you sometimes. I that's what that's the difference between middle aged me and like twenty something year old me, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Young, <laughs> young, young, yeah, young, me, young me might have told people to break up, but old me don't tell people to break up. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. My name is it's, Bennett. I'm not in it type shit, right? Yeah, now. yeah. But I do tell you this. <laughs> the old me might have said, yeah, let's let's go hang out. Let's go get to the club. Let's go get some new shit. Well, you know, that's the, that's always yeah. the description. Correct, you know, correct. You, yeah, yeah. Funny, right? you, always gotta, you always gotta say long time ago, long time ago. Yeah, long time ago. Long time ago. Long time ago. But, no, but I don't understand why, why uh, you know, I guess it's different when you have two entertainers, why they let this play out in public. You know, I, I think when you have two people, it's hard enough, but then you bring two fan bases together. And, you well, know, sometimes this, that's the reason they get together. And, right. So that's the yeah. issue, too. So so if this is part industry um, and you have two publicists probably involved. Yeah. Then it, it gets shaped. The more people you let in a relationship, the more distractions you're going to have about a relationship. Now, I'll, I'll say this. One thing I realized, regardless of your economic status, regardless of your popularity or your position, there are certain things that are just common. Now, I would assume there's a lot of people that just feels like when she makes these proclamations, I'm done. I needed to move on. And you're saying that you are having a divorce publicly and then you're actually back with the person then it brings your judgment of the situation into question. People are going to choose sides and, and you actually license them or deputize them to do that if you're going to make these, you know, everybody on social media and they want to share everything that's going on. So I, I think they set themselves up for failure. Yeah, yeah. I, I believe too, sometimes these breakups are, are 
to gain more popularity and get people talking about you too. You know right. I mean? The question is why do, why do we have a culture that that loves to sensationalize that? You know, I, I mean, you know, those things we we like to see. Drama sells, Calvin. Drama sells. Right, right. Yeah. And, and so we have to take a look at that. Just, you know, you, one hand you hear this whole black love and all these different mm -hmm. things that people mm -hmm. want to perpetuate. And then on the other hand, it's like we love to see these shows where people are arguing and people are throwing, you know, bottles at each other and all those things yeah, like yeah. that. You know, I, I think somewhere along the line, we, we got to kind of figure out who, what is the identity crisis in our community? You yeah, know, there's yeah, yeah. people that, that love to just see dysfunction because yeah. what happens is they're, they're comfortable with chaos because that's what they're accustomed to. Correct. Correct. But look, look, look what happened this summer. Everybody's trying to pick sides between Jada and Will Smith with the whole entanglement thing. You yeah, know, they yeah. look like people wanted, were saying Will Smith was a sucker and they wanted him to really just break up it because I think I'll. I don't want to say our culture, but we we're addicted to the drama and trauma. Like we, it's, a, it's a fact. Like we, it, it was saying, hey, look how many reality shows, like you said, Kelvin, throwing drinks in the face. They love seeing the drama. I don't yeah. know what it is. It's just yep. like we're addicted to because people are really rooting almost for them to break up. You well, know, well, part, party being the L set. I think the Will Smith situation is very very interesting for these reasons. Um, first of all, a lot of it just didn't make sense. Uh, what I saw when I saw that that. Uh, red table discussion that they had between the two of them, I saw something that looked at carefully crafted and orchestrated. When I, I say the same thing, Two, Kelvin. Say two the same actors thing. that were acting, there's only one thing I didn't understand with it. Why they took a person who is D-list from, from most accounts <laughs> and acknowledged him on an A-list level because I don't think... I don't think this is Jada's first rodeo, and I don't think it's mm. Will's. I think that's. A, I think they. I, my perception is they probably have an open marriage or something like yeah. that. The average dude that you cheat on is not gonna sit across the table from you without you surrounded by security. Once you talking mm. about he was with another man, especially one half his age. So yeah. I just, I just think, I, I, I think what Will, what I saw on there was a man saying. How did you allow this private thing to become public? To become public. Because usually yeah, yeah. when we have these parties or these get togethers or whatever they may engage in, you usually will have people there that are on their level as far as their status is concerned. And you went outside of that. And that's I think the whole that point. was the issue. That, that's the whole point, man. That guy was a couple's toy, man. You know what I'm saying? It was like, you know, he. I think this is what happened. I think she just kind of got wrapped up in something, you know, it was supposed to be a toy, something to play where she got wrapped up, man, and it got out, man. And I think that was the biggest uh, sin with regards to the marriage, the fact that, not that it happened, but the fact that it got out, man. You know, now he that's rubbing up against his brand and it's messing up the whole brand together, man. He's kind of almost got to distance himself from it, but at the same time, you know, still stick with it. And um, it's a very difficult thing to navigate at that point, man. Their, their concerns are far, far different from my concerns, man. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So they're, you know, their money, their money is longer than train smoke. They, they don't, they don't hurt We have, you know, what I'm saying. And another thing too, they break up, they can move on. Ain't nobody getting hurt. Everybody yeah. will be fine. And, and one of the comments somebody said, uh, people are fascinated with train wrecks. Exactly. Yes. That's yes. exactly the case. <laughs> yeah, it's the same yeah. reason why you're driving along. You know, but what happens when there's a car accident on the side of the road? Traffic stops. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. It, messes up the other lane. it messes up the other lane that the accident is not even in. Well, that's the whole point. Yeah. The, the accident, they didn't pull the car over off on the shoulder. It ain't even in the lane. But you still got traffic because people got to stop and they got to look. You know what and, I mean? Yeah, and the yeah, way yeah. I've always framed it is this. When you used to go to the circus as a kid and you watched the person walk across the tightrope, you watched for one reason. And then the thing is, when you used to see circus performances where there was accidents at this at the performance, what did people used to say? Dad, I wish I was at that one. You know yeah, what I mean? They wish they were there. Right, right. You know? That's that's what's captivating, you know. And yeah. so, you know, I I know this happened a while ago and we were not on air when it happened. Um but it just seemed very, very carefully rehearsed. It seemed like it, it came out a week later then to put it on your own platform that you created, you know, and um, I, I like Will Smith as an actor. Um, something is different in Hollywood. Something is different in the water in Hollywood. You, you see so many people, I, I look back to, you know, when Martin Lawrence had his issues, when, when Dave Chappelle fleed the industry, why these people who have gotten all the success 
and the money and the fame and the adoration, what is it that makes them want to abandon ship when they get out there? There's certain things that seem to be permissible out there. And I think what happens is sometimes what you do to get in that industry or what you do to stay in that industry, I think puts you at war with yourself sometimes. So something internally, I think, convicts you to say, you know what, although I'm, I'm a star, there's still brokenness inside of me because of what I had to do to become a star. And it wasn't just predicated on my talent. Yeah, yeah. Someone said seeing someone else's trauma is make you feel blessed about how, like, I guess how your life is feeling. Like, you feel good about yours when you see somebody else going through something tragic. Right? <laughs> I, I think there could be some truth to that. It, it depends on the person. Some people <laughs> yeah. say made me very, very humble and not to take my life for granted. Other people like to say, good, I can deflect from my own life and look how bad somebody else's is and make me feel better about myself. And I think that part may be dangerous. Yeah. yeah. I think it might touch the same the, the same bone as comedy, though, man. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, the thing yeah. that makes comedy so funny is the realness of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. So, you know, it's just, it may be the same thing that keeps us interested. You know what I mean? Right. And that's yeah. fair. There is, there is no bad press, like they say. All press, all attention is good attention, as long as people are watching or listening. Mm -hmm. you know? Right. You know, yeah. you just got to be able to live with yourself, you know. But uh, yeah. I know, I know. I remember when you were saying about the drink in the face. I used to sit there and watch some reality shows, and then you see that um, women fighting. Basically, oh, a group of women get yeah. together to go out to dinner so they could fight. That's that's crazy. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> I mean, we all gonna get together. We gonna go on a trip. And we're going to hope that somebody fights. You know what I'm right, saying? Yeah, that's that's right. crazy. Well, I so, think more importantly, you can't have a camera crew there unless you promise them action. Correct. Right. I mean, yeah. yeah. And that's, security that's there. Line. Right. Yeah. Nobody wants to come and see everybody unified. That's not yeah, why yeah. they oh, That's, why, yeah, that's, that's not that's, why they get paid. And, and like you just admitted, that's not why you watch. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Some people want to watch something on screen that represents what you think or like, but you can't do in your real life. Yeah, and that yeah. becomes fantasy, and that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. So, guys, yeah. guys another hot topic this week was one of probably one of my hip hop idols. Kind of uh, let me down, but I mean, let me not put my opinion out there yet. Our man Ice Cube with the uh, plan for black people. So, if uh, people don't know, Ice Cube has said he has this plan that he met with uh, Jared Kushner in, in the Trump uh, Trump party administration. He flew out to D.C., met with them, and he come with this a uh, black plan. And I guess Trump and them call it now the platinum plan. The platinum plan I guess the appeal to us. I guess we like platinum and gold teeth and shit like that. Yeah, we like shiny things. <laughs> like shiny so, things. I mean, you might as well call this shit the Ciroc plan or the Hennessy plan. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, what what do you guys feel about Ice T and uh, I mean Ice Cube? And I got I got some I want to say, but I'm gonna let you guys go first. Anyone you guys can take the mic right now. Listen, man, I think it's telling <laughs> what you just said. Like, you know, uh, you know, it's the platinum plan. You know what I mean? Like, it's kind of like that's whoever came up with that. It's like, you know, that's that our idea of wealth. You know what I'm saying? It's got to be like Ciroc. It's got to be expensive. You know, how much money we can spend. You know what I mean? We don't think about, you know, uh, growing our wealth or whatever, just, you know, throwing it up in the air. You know how it is, the whole Mickey Rain syndrome, throwing right. it up in the air and everything. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it's Platinum Plan, it's Ciroc Plan, it's Hennessy Plan, whatever you want to call it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, yeah, but, you know, I mean, I just, I think it's I, off top. If they call anything with, with regard to politics, <laughs> we know that most of the problems that are with dealing with politics, you, we try to get money out of politics, man. Remember that when that was an issue, you know, every, every you have every every political party says, okay, you know, I want to get the money out of politics until they come in power, then they, you know, it kind of goes away. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's just like you know, it, it, it to me is just kind of like it, it, it almost it almost is like. A, you know, something subliminal to us as voters, you know what I mean? Like, so that we don't even have a conversation anymore of getting money out of politics. Yeah. It's like, you know, what are you willing to spend? How much are you willing to spend? You know, how important is your vote to you? You know what I mean? So I don't know. You know, I think it's, um, I, 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 think, we're in a, I think we're in a very strange place right now. Yeah, right? This, yeah, is, this is the way I saw it. Let me say this. This is, this is a, a promise I tried to make to myself, which is not debate with anybody on a subject I don't know what I'm talking about. And what I saw Ice Cube do was start to debate a subject where he looked like he really didn't know what he was talking about. Yeah. He wasn't in his wheelhouse. Now, I watched his interview with, with Chris Cuomo. Then I watched his interview with Roland Martin, the one with Roland Martin, and I no. knew Roland Martin wouldn't let him off the hook. Oh, I knew he right. wouldn't let him off oh, the hook. No. No. And what he, he did was Ice yeah. Cube 
embarrassed mm. himself, in my opinion. Mm. I thought he mm. was going to do that. What what happens is, is the, the, the Trump administration, and I agree with D.L. Hughley, who had mentioned that the Trump administration does not get with people or invite people that are experts in their field. They Correct. just think the way to communicate with the black community is through either hip hop or athletics or entertainment Correct. at some point. Okay. That's so the they, issue. They, they don't ask uh, Dolly Parton to come up there. Right. They don't exactly. ask, they, they don't, exactly. they don't, white people don't, they don't ask, uh, Dan, let's speak to Danny DeVito. Now this no. is what I didn't understand. <laughs> this, is, this is what I did not understand. Or this, is, this, is, this is the Trump effect that amazes me. So you here are less than three weeks out from this election about. Right. Mm -hmm. So Ice Cube goes and connects his name, whether he's a part of the administration or not, he connects his name with Donald Trump while the ship is sinking. He connects yeah. his, now, now, now what you did was you isolated your fan base, the yeah. people that go to see Friday movies, the people that 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 love your your music. You're the one that 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 had f the police and all this stuff like that. Now you got a man that said we need to restore law and order that has no regard for for so for sensitivity of black issues. You connect or align yourself with that person three weeks before the election. It made absolutely no sense. In other words, I could not think of one thing that Ice Cube could gain from this. But listen, not one thing. That's the thing, though. We're talking about entertainers. You know what I mean? They all they have a I think it rubbed up against an old muscle of his, you know what I mean? Which is to say he's kind of like entertainers are like a, a clear blank wall, you know what I mean? For advertisers and for promoters and everything, you know what I mean? Just throw yourself, throw money. And, and it's, it, it's almost a reflex. If you throw money, enough money at him, he's going to grab it and he's going to promote it. And he's not going to think that hard about it. You know what Randy, I mean? Yeah, so Randy, that's what I really feel, you know? Randy, Randy, how, how I see it, I'm like D. I was, I'm a huge fan of Ice Cube. I remember Ice Cube's first record. I follow Ice Cube on Instagram. And when I was following Ice Cube on Instagram, I had a little issue with him telling people to withhold your vote until you get something. I quick. absolutely agree with you. Okay. I, I so no, no, the thing is, I just saw something in the comments by somebody. I'm sorry if I didn't catch your name. But the thing is, Ice Cube should have known better than this because this happened to Steve Harvey as well. Steve Harvey took his behind yeah. up to the Trump Tower. Yeah. And the thing yeah. is, he had to wind up hiring PR people to revive his fucking career. Yep. You know what I'm yep. saying? Yep. So now the thing is this. Ice Cube, like you said, they they let Ice Cube come up here. They didn't let anybody that's um, um, educated or have a background in medicine, education, law, or anything like that to put a plan together for the black community. They let a rapper come up there. And I'm not not downgrading um, Ice Cube or whatever. Maybe his intentions was well, but he should have known better to do this. He does not have the background to be able to do something like this. Well, you know this what I'm saying? Then, I don't then, hold on, wait a minute. Let me just. And then the thing is, too, Trump is known for optics. So the oh, thing wow. is, he's going to anybody anybody come up there black. Guess what? He's going to take a picture with them. He's going. It's going to get out that they were up there, and it's going to try to gain black votes. And that, that's that's what it's about, you know. Okay. But you so, got you got to unpack. You have to unpack, you know. You have to unpack this. What what Ice Cube said today was was interesting. Or the interview I saw, Ice Cube has given the impression that the administration sought him out. I want to know, out of all the entertainers in the world, what would make this administration go to Ice Cube? Like well, no, Ice Cube has right. white. See, the thing is like. Phil Simon was saying before, Ice Cube has white management. Not saying anything we have a white management. No, no. But his, but his right. manager was the one that made the connection to, to the yes. whole party. But if you're so, the Trump administration, so, what you have going after Chuck B? Yeah, exactly. So that's my Not thing. Is, but, so it, but, it just doesn't seem plausible. But, but my, my, man, said, he, my man Brad said he should have took Ja Rule. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> so, here's here the thing with Ice Cube. This is the thing with the whole... The well, tone look. Tone look should have been Yeah, wild thing. So, here's my yeah. thing with, one thing with Ice Cube is like he when he said that the the Democratic Party said wait till after the election whatever party the thing is Ice Cube was also invited to meet with Kamala Harris who's a representative of California with him with Ti Snoop Dogg Dio Hughley and Killer Mike Ice Cube wow. refused Ice Cube didn't show up so with him saying that like they didn't reach out they did I don't know if Ice Cube has a thing against women because in this in this in this black contract. It was no, nothing mentioned about black women. Um, nothing mm -hmm. mentioned. So you got so so that's, you know. That's, so that's my point but, too, like he's not. You, you you can't go up there and make a deal if you're not going to take care of everybody. Yeah, but like, see, the thing is, like, you got to take care of all of us. The thing yeah. is, when you like, if I'm going to meet with somebody like that, 
I'm gonna bring my Louis Farrakhan. Correct. No matter if you don't like them, win, lose, or draw, you don't like them, I'm gonna bring some. I'm gonna bring uh, uh, um, Dr. Claude Anderson, uh, Dr. Boyce Watkins. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I'm I'm a, I'm gonna bring my sister Simone and all. all, all I'm, that's what I'm bringing to the table because they gonna come with their full squad. Yeah. yeah why yeah. not yours? Like you come with that. Like okay, where was you Ice Cube during the primary? Where were you Ice Cube four years ago when this guy came in? Why this the the thing about his uh uh Black Plan for Black America whatever it was called because the Black Caucus already had this four years ago. Why didn't you bring Hakeem Jeffries? Why you bring Cory Booker? Who had this been this point, thing's been sitting on Mitch McConnell's desk for four years? Your yeah, point, yeah. Is a <laughs> your point. Now listen to what he said. They asked, and I, I think it was Roland Martin that asked that same thing about the primaries because someone I think um, you know emailed him or something and wanted to ask Ice Cube that question. Mm -hmm. Ice Cube says these exact words. Well, I was actually doing art. I was actually, in other words, I was working. Remember, he had his basketball league. He had all the yeah. things that he does. He says, I thought this stuff was handled. Then I looked up, and, and I said, right there? So, in other words, between when Trump got in until recently, you thought this stuff was handled. <laughs> and then you looked up. Well, what made you look up when they stopped when you pulled your players off the court? When you weren't <laughs> making money with the league anymore? What made you all of a sudden just look up? You, you mm. see, it reminded me of when Michael Jordan made this outlandish statement uh, uh, last year. Talking about I can no longer stand by and watch what's going on with my people. Yeah, because oh. you're 55 years old now, and it's yeah. not going to rock the boat like it would have when you mm -hmm. were younger making that right. money. So all right. this idea that everybody just all of a sudden just looked up or just had this awareness, everybody knows this struggle has been going on long before you know our great grandparents got here and so what happens is it makes people think that there's something else in it for ice cube for you to come right now and jump onto a sinking ship three weeks before this man's fate is determined and i don't just think trump is gonna lose i think trump is gonna lose going away i think he's gonna get blown out i think oh, he's, he's gonna definitely yeah. i think he's gonna yeah. be embarrassed on election day yeah, yeah. so yeah, ice, yeah. like ice cube his trigger i guess was george floyd which happened what in the spring so he didn't come out talking to august so you still had a gap of three months. Like you, if you just woke up that from a coma, and oh, so but, he like, thought, but he thought it was handled. <laughs> yeah, like he it, it's it was handled, right? I guess I guess that's how most entertainers uh, wind up in uh, tax court because they always think theft was handled. And listen, man, I'm not upset. Listen, that's real though, because they, their job is to be entertainers, not to be accountants. You know what I'm saying? That's real, and that's why it's very important to have good people around you but you have to know that those people around you really have your best interest and in, uh, and you really have to live a die on those decisions that they make for you and, and since we're speaking you of entertainers we have another entertainer jumping in the his hat and he's been doing for a while our man p diddy sean combs so if you haven't seen recently p diddy has yeah. started saying that uh the white men of today is dangerous we got to look out for them before he was about holding the vote and stuff like that and i'm mean, like he's another entertainer yeah he's just a yeah. smooth with trump and all that stuff like that now so any guy, you know, you guys can take it. I don't want to take it over. What you think about P. Diddy I, now I, saying I, I this? I should go first. I'm going to tell you why. I should go first, and I'm going to tell you why. And I want to be fair. Again, I will always tell you when I know I'm not objective. I was trying to think of one thing that I'm concerned yeah. with less than that. I have to be honest, and I know that's unfair to say, and I you, you should actually ingest what, what is out there. I didn't click on it. I had no interest in it. There is something about Puffy intrinsically I do not trust. Um, there's something about him that uh, I think just uh, seems very, very um, selfish and calculated. And I just don't, for him to, all, I remember the, uh, the voter die shirts and then people felt that that was some type of marketing scam. And so mm -hmm. I, I, the reason I said I, I think I may have to recuse myself from this subject, but um, I, I'm definitely interested in hearing what you gentlemen have to say about it. I, I would say this: any any anything that you hear with regard to politics is going to be it's all marketing. You know, every politician that you ever saw that ever was successful, you know, had to market themselves some sort of way. They had to find a niche or whatever. You know what I mean? So I don't begrudge him uh, doing whatever marketing he has to do to get across his uh, as long as you believe in the issue you're as long as you I'm believe in it exactly right. as long if as you, you believe in the issue marketer then now yeah. i have a problem with that. yeah yeah and and you know is it in our best interest because you know what i mean i have to align myself with it in order to receive you know the 
the the the idea or whatever and, and get with it. I think, you know, listen, for a long time we've talked about, you know, we need another party. You know what I mean? And if he's gonna turn around and create and he thinks he has the wherewithal or whatever to create a uh, a movement and which may eventually lead to another party, fine. You know what I mean? I don't now when we think of parties, there are many political parties. You I mean it's not just Republican and Democrat, you know what I mean? So you know, it's not out of the question that he can, you know, he can go and create a party. He certainly has the money. He certainly has the influence. You know what I mean? He can just go and submit whatever paperwork he has, you know, to, and, and try his best to get his candidate or whatever, you know, on whatever ballots he needs to get. You know what I mean? Whatever he's yeah. talking it, whether it be local levels or, 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 or national levels, you know. So more power to the brother. We could probably use it. You know what I mean? I just want to know. You know what his real, what you know what they what you know what platform they're about. You know, I think they they, re, they released uh, some yeah. of the, some you know what what, it, what yeah. they're about. And, and the thing is, like the rich, like celebrities have the access. Puffy has his own channel, so he's always gonna get on television. Right. You know, and, and like yeah. he's, always, he's always gonna get your views and ratings and stuff like that. You know, so go ahead, go ahead Rod. I'm just close out. The no, the, the thing is too. I was looking at one of the um people making comments. Um, Brittany Holder, and she typed some exactly what I'm sitting here thinking. You know, you got to understand, Ice Cube and Puffy are black men that happen to be rich, not rich men that happen and to be And they benefit black. from Trump. Get, that's it, correct. Do. That's where I'm going that's with this. That's where I'm going with this. So the mm. thing is, if Trump stays in office, they win. Because the thing yeah. is, even though we're all black, it's like basically me, Ice Cube, P. Diddy, you know, we in the same game because we're black, but we're not wearing the same jersey. So the thing is, they can't. They, they, they got the green. They got, they got green and black. They got, yeah, they got, they got, got a lot, green and black. more green. They got a lot more green. Because the thing is, the more money they make, the more tax cuts they're going to get, which is going to make them yeah. richer. You know what I'm saying? Where me, I'm not going to see too much of that because I don't make their type of money. You know what I mean? Right. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, when you go around telling people withhold their vote or whatever, that's 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 reckless and that's irresponsible mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because basically, you're not in the communities that we're in and the needs that. That, that we need and, and, and our families and stuff like that. So for you to go around saying that is just totally irresponsible. You are helping them suppress the vote. Yep. With, so, right. You're helping them. You know what I'm saying? So right. that, and the thing yeah. is, why, why, the thing is, why do you continuously have this voter suppression towards minorities if the vote, if the minority vote doesn't mean anything? That's why they're suppressing it, because it does mean something. 